So I don't, I'm not going to go through everything of this new update right now because, well, frankly, there's a couple people who are going through it a lot. There's some other videos. I just want to talk about a couple of the biggest things that I've experienced so far. The first one is that when I first installed this, I couldn't get my audio interface to work. So there's that. And um, after reinstalling its drivers and restarting a couple times, it finally started working. So I think we're past that bump for the moment. Um, the installation otherwise was pretty easy. I pulled open an old project and it's working great. I'm not going to go too much into live loops. Uh, I'm not going to be using live loops very much. I, I don't work that way myself. I know that a lot of people are excited about it and a lot of people aren't excited about it. But uh, I did find that I've got several different workstations I use. One of them I use for making these videos. It's in a sound, a better soundproof room and it's an older, uh, it's an older Mac mini and that computer has a hard time with live loops. Um, it doesn't have any problems with any of my other projects at all. That live loops just seems to take a lot of processing for the moment. So I'm not, I haven't done a full comparison on, on what the power capabilities are yet, but there, there's a few things that I've just been blown away by in the new update. And so that's what I'm going to focus on for a few minutes. The first thing is all of the new or are all of the new sampling capabilities. Now, sampling is something I do a ton. I've been doing sampling for decades. I wrote a book about sampling. I've sampled, created sample that had my instruments released professionally. And I would say that I've always been a little jealous of Ableton and some of the things it can do, not to the point where I'm going to switch, but I really have enjoyed watching and hoping that we would get some of those things. And here we are. So I've got this little part of my voice here. I'm just going to click with the marquee tool and drag it over to an empty spot down here and check out what happens here. I'm going to do a quick sampler optimized. It's going to create this all just really quickly. I'm going to put a forward loop on it too so I can have that. And I've got a whole instrument just like that. We can use slicing tools, make it a one shot for like percussion. We can record directly into this if we wanted. And then we have all of our normal other manipulation tools, LFOs. We have a mod matrix, pitch, filter, amplitude envelopes. I'm not sure what's down there. Oh, so we just have some basic MIDI control. I mean, what? That's pretty cool. And I'd say it's easier than any other sampler I've ever used for a quick sample. Now, the one I'm really excited to get into then would be the full sampler, which has mono, stereo, multi-output, and 5.1. And this is essentially the new EXS24. And it, I mean promises to be incredible in terms of what it can do. I need a bigger screen. I wish that I could, you know, break this out onto two monitors because we can do mapping. Let's turn off all the other things here. So here's our mapping screen and we have a zone screen as well to do individual things. <laughs> That's right. I just had that sample loaded in the quick sampler and all of a sudden I open up the full sampler and it took what was ever in there and just brought it right in. Yeah, it just brought it right in. So it just, whatever was there, opened it up right into here. I actually just thought of this. I wanted to try this real quick. If we did alchemy, it's not there anymore. But going back into sampler then.
and it's gone. So that's really just between the quick sampler and the sampler. It's not between the other instruments. Um, okay, we're going to have to do a deep dive on this another time. I know you're going to have some other options out there to watch, but I hope you'll come back because this is definitely one of the areas that I have more experience and deeper experience than most. And so I want to actually go through what is capable uh, inside this sampler. A tie to that, though, is something that is not brand new, but it's brand new here to Logic. And this is a really interesting instrument that or tool. It's not an instrument. It goes under audio effects. It's called the Auto Sampler. This was something that came from a company called Redmatica out of Italy a number of years ago. Apple bought them and closed them. And then a few years, like five years ago maybe, they pulled it into main stage. So it was in main stage. You've had access to this now if you have main stage uh, for a number of years. But what we can do with this is actually sample instruments. Anything that's MIDI capable with audio outputs, you can actually connect either with an external instrument or you could do that in here with uh, just anything. So if you have a complex instrument with a synth, you want to turn it into uh, an EXS file, then you can do that on here. It'll turn it into a sampled instrument, which, so for instance, let me give you an example of how this might work. If you want to take a sculpture sound, sculpture is just available in Logic, and I can take it, I could create a full patch on it, I could auto sample it, and then I could let my friends who use Ableton play that same instrument. So now we can actually help out all of our friends who use Ableton with a lot of our instruments. See what I did there? Anyway, cool. So we'll go more into this as well. It's, it's super straightforward. This is a one screen thing, but you essentially set all your parameters and then it does all of the sampling for you. And it takes all of the sounds and edits them, loops them, lays them out in the zones. It's incredible. So if you've ever created an instrument, a sampled instrument by yourself, uh, you don't need to do that anymore if it's MIDI capable of the original source. So that doesn't apply if you're sampling like audio recordings around your house or something, but it's pretty cool. So another thing that we've been really uh, blessed to get inside Logic, use that. Okay, uh, of course we have the drum synth. because we need more 808 type sounds. And we'll be going through more of these over the next few weeks. Great addition to our percussion sounds. And so that's, I mean, you can never go wrong. That's in addition to our already existing drum machine designer, etc. So, uh, you'll see I've got more samples I need to download now that I just haven't got to today. Okay, cool. Let's go back. Drum Machine Designer. Let's get rid of that for a moment. And look, I think we just, I can't actually, there's no button to pull that off. That's really amazing. That looks like a bug to me. So I'm going to have to... Delete that, although it's not a bug. Um, that's because it's a folder. A stack. No, I don't know, where is it? I literally can't empty out that thing. I can't even delete it. I mean, I can't even like reset the channel strip. So that looks like a bug to me a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what that was but that's cool i like finding new things out here uh we do have so many under the hood improvements i was reading just as an example uh there were let's see 25 flex improvements to flex pitch and time i mean not just like small little things but many of them were significant in terms of making it sound better and work better there's just hundreds and hundreds of things that have changed. So expect 
an equal number or greater number of bugs, right? Is that what we always say for logic? Anyway, not exactly, but there are going to be some things that we have to work out. Uh, things that I am still scratching my head why they haven't done anything with. For instance, like our vocoder plugin looks amazing still. That's a joke. Um, we do have things like our imaging, our stereo spread, which is a plugin I still use all the time, which is ancient. So there's, I mean, there's some things that are still not changing here. Here's our UltraBeat. Now I will say UltraBeat did update so that it looks a little bit better when you scroll in or zoom in or make it bigger or whatever, but it's still the old interface, etc. So some bummers along with some cool things here. Uh, we're just getting started. I, this is a little bit scattered. Um, just, I just want to go through my initial reaction to this, and then I'll be doing some actual in-depth videos, one a day for the next few days, just going through all of this stuff. So, uh, look for that. Let's see if there's anything else. And if you want to see a full list, remember to go to the help menu under release notes. And... This is the full list of everything that was here. I mean, so this is not a small release. This is one of the biggest ones we've had in a long time. So all the live loops, the sampler, the quick sampler, the drum machine designer. So there's more inside the drum machine designer we haven't, I didn't even look at yet. We have our step sequencer, which is uh, going to be pretty powerful. And that's one of the things we need to look at as well. Um, so we'll get to that. All of these things are, we're going to just explore and I need some time on them. The other interesting thing that I learned is that music help tech guy who I'm a huge fan of, and I'm a music mogul, I'm a huge fan of, clearly both of them are part of the beta program with Logic because when the image was leaked a few weeks ago, uh, they never made any videos about the leak, which means that they probably knew about it and couldn't say anything because of their, you know, NDA. And now this morning when Logic came out, they already had tons of videos and deals with Mac Pro Video. So clearly those guys are on the, the testing team for Logic, which is really cool because they're, they're two opinions that I really trust. And I think that they're hopefully helping build the best software ever, but, uh, Definitely check out some of their videos if you want more in-depth on any of these things. Okay, so that's it for the moment. Like I said, we're going to be doing more in-depth here in the next... Uh, every day this week we'll be doing something and we'll just give you as much content and exploration as possible.